So this question is asking about when the number of protons in nucleus increases, the potential energy of the orbiting electrons increases. Comment on the validity of this statement. This answer, comment on the validity of Daryl's statement. This question can have many answers depending upon the argument that you make and the way you see the problem. So I'm going to talk about three different scenarios and the three different answers associated with those scenarios. So let's talk about scenario number one. In the first scenario, we're going to compare two atoms in which we have increased protons with no change in the number of electrons. So this would be like if we compared lithium and beryllium plus one. Lithium has three protons, beryllium has four protons, and lithium has three electrons, and beryllium plus one also has three electrons. So we see we've changed the amount of protons, but we have made the electrons remain the same. So in this situation, if we were to look at the statement again, when the number of protons increases, the potential energy of the orbiting electrons increases. So let me draw an energy well to give you some visualization. So we've got an energy well. We've got the nucleus down here, so protons are here. And up here we have zero kilojoules per mole. And let's say down at the bottom we have negative 100. So the statement saying when the number of protons increases, the potential energy of the orbiting electrons increases. That means it should go up this way. However, if we look at beryllium versus lithium, the potential energy of our electrons for beryllium are actually going to decrease. This decreases PE, potential energy, because as you add more protons, there is a larger electrostatic force pulling the electrons closer to the nucleus and as you get closer to the nucleus the potential energy will decrease not increase so if we draw little circles we've got lithium here's our nucleus and here would be like our, our lithium shell but our beryllium would be a lot closer to the nucleus because it's got more protons pulling those electrons making them tighter held. Tighter held to the nucleus, smaller in diameter, decreasing in potential energy. So that is scenario number one. Now let's look at scenario number two. In scenario number two, I'm increasing the amount of protons, increasing electrons, but same number of shells. So this would be like if we look down a row, for instance, from boron to fluorine. So we know that boron has five protons, five electrons, and fluorine has nine protons and nine electrons. And so down a row, same amount of shells, we are also seeing the same thing as in scenario one. The electrons and fluorine are pulled closer to the nucleus because it's the same amount of shells, but more electrostatic force on these electrons, making them tighter held. Making them decrease in potential energy. That means we're going further down into the well, closer to the nucleus. As the electrons get closer to the nucleus, because there's a greater force pulling them in, their potential energy will decrease. The outer electrons get closer to nucleus. So this goes contrary to the statement as well. So the number of protons have increased, but the potential energy of the orbiting electrons has actually decreased because they have gotten close to the nucleus because there's more force pulling them in. Let's look at scenario three. In scenario three, we have an increase in protons and an increase in electrons and an increase in shells. So this would be like if we looked at fluorine and chlorine.
Fluorine has nine protons, chlorine has 17 protons, nine electrons, and 17 electrons. So when we look at this scenario, then the statement becomes valid. From chlorine, we can see that there are 17 protons and 17 electrons. And in fluorine, 19 pro nine protons and nine electrons. And if we're thinking about in terms of how far away the outer orbiting electrons are from the nucleus, as you add shells, the electrons must get further away from the nucleus. To add more electrons on, you have to build out shells further away from the nucleus. That makes our number, our potential energy, get closer to zero. So like our orbiting electrons will increase. So we could say like this is n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, and our chlorine has electrons in this n equals 3 shell, whereas fluorine only has electrons in this n equals 2 shell. So our orbiting electrons are increasing in potential energy. So when you add shells, they must get further away from the nucleus there and by increasing their potential energy. So the answer to this question really depends on the type of argument that you want to make and which scenario you are looking at.